Hello, sorry I'm talking fast, but I'm in a rush to get this video done, and this hopefully gives you an idea of the urgency I felt when Games Workshop sent me a copy of Warcry Blood Hunt. <sighs> Hi, I'm Ross, this is for Hammer Videos. So, those of you who've followed the website for a long while will probably know that we have been humping Games Workshop's legs saying, please send us stuff, please send us stuff, and Games Workshop are sick of us, and they finally gave in and went, Fine, we'll send you some stuff. And the first thing they sent me was Warcry Blood Hunt. Certainly not a product I would normally pick. I'd normally give that to Rob for a review. I'm a 40k guy, he's more of a fancy guy. But nevertheless, it turned up with me and I think they're testing me to see whether or not I can do well and whether or not they're gonna still send us content. So I wanted to smash it out of the park. We'd promised a written review, which we're gonna do. We also did our price breakdown, which you can see on our website right now. And I also wanted to make sure that I could get some video content out, which is what you're currently watching. And just to add fuel to the fire, they emailed me halfway through this review to say, hey, if you get anything painted by this date, which was last Monday, we'll try and feature that in an upcoming Warhammer community article. So for somebody who pretty much never paints his models and has a sea of grey plastic, I had to try and get this entire set painted in a week. And I know, being on Games Workshop special list puts me in a very privileged position. But previously, I've been buying our own things for review. So anything you've seen on Fohammer.com, we've paid for when it comes to Games Workshop stuff. And we still have a mountain of things to go through. And like most people, I'll build things and go, ooh, new shiny whenever they release a new article. And I'll be so distracted by the new thing that I won't even bother painting the old thing. As I stand here right now, I'm looking at an entire army of Eldar, along with Space Marines, along with Horus Heresy bits that are probably never gonna get painted. But with the lure of featuring in a Warhammer community article, or at least potentially featuring, I decided to put everything aside and actually try and paint everything ready for this article. After all, slap chops a thing now, and I decided to give that a go too. Building these things was really straightforward. Games Workshop's guides are spot on. I think I spotted one error in numbering, but it was fairly obvious what part went where. The corn dog sprue was a little bit chaotic with the parts for different models spread all over the place as opposed to kept together. So what I've done is my usual thing of coloring them in and putting them up on fauxhammer.com just to give you a bit more visual idea with the guide where all the different bits are for the models. They are cool minis, and as I said, not what I would normally pick, I'm not really the biggest fantasy guy. It was great to see that, as usual, when you put them together, most of the mould lines and seams are hidden in folds of things like cloth or under the arms, which is always really great, because it gives you less cleanup to do. Now, if I wasn't in such of a rush, I would have done a lot more gap filling, but again, I had to get this painted and out within a week. So I decided to try my hand at Slap Chop. Everyone's talking about it. I've never had a go at it. I've painted in similar ways before, but I've never actually done the dry brush and then paint with a transparent paint before. So throughout this video, I've actually approached these models in three different ways. And I've also fudged in some advanced scenery stuff too. Will I make the Warhammer community article? Let's see. So I started with the trees, and even if you don't do what I'm currently doing, the good thing is some of the branches will go on in different places, which I actually noticed by not following the guide and doing it by accident, thinking there was a specific and obvious place for each branch. It does give a bit of variation to the trees, which is good if you've got multiple sets and you want a little bit of variation across your battlefield. However, trees in general, when it comes to plastic, are just a little bit flat. So what I decided to do was heat up all the branches with a heat gun and just give them a little bit of twist and raise them up so that we can add some foliage onto them later. If you are doing this though, I recommend a hairdryer or a heat gun on its lowest setting and take your time because there's a very fine line between melted plastic that you can bend and pose and put into a new position and melted plastic that's burnt and sets on fire. Don't do the setting on fire one. When it came to painting the trees, and I'm sorry throughout this guide, I'm not gonna list all the paints in the video because it's not a direct painting guide, but if you do wanna follow on, I will list them all down in the comments and what section I use them in. I just really, I don't have time to do it for this video and get it out, but hopefully for the next one, I should be a little bit more prepared. To paint the trees and all of the scenery really, I used a technique that I'm very comfortable with now. I actually went to Byron's house from Artis Opus and sat with him for a good few hours as he walked me through the technique of dry brushing that we've all seen on his multiple and very impressive videos. 
Now, we actually did this back during, I think, the second lockdown in 2020. And despite me having footage, I still haven't edited that video up till now because I haven't found the right approach for it. But I think that now is the right time to drop it and that will be coming soon. So make sure you subscribe and you don't miss that. But essentially the approach for that video, which you'll see is really useful, is that we as miniature painters watch so many YouTube videos online and we try and follow the techniques, but it's really hard to determine what we're getting wrong because the experts who teach us do so many of the detailed steps subconsciously and forget to even tell us about them. So the approach for my dry brushing video is, I'm like you, I've watched Byron's videos and I've tried to follow his technique. I then turn up at his house, show him what I've learned and he tells me everything that I'm getting wrong. And then I put that into a nice summary for you to say, these are the key things, the key principles that I've learned from this one session that give you good results versus just trying to dry brush with these dry brushes as though it was a Citadel dry brush. But essentially what I followed here was stipple on the base layer to give it some texture and bite for the following layers to hold on to, get my paints ready, and then as I dry brush the layers on, mix them through at the same time. So I've got a graduation going from the darker colour to the lighter colour rather than just a direct and sharp contrast dark colour, mid colour, light colour. And I also paid attention to the forms on the model, so things like the bamboo, yes, I could just dry brush it three times and try and apply it lighter each time, but what I did was when you look at the face of it, you can actually see a gradient with the lighter parts at the top and the darker parts at the bottom, and it just adds a little bit more visual interest than something where you can see depth, you can also see that colour graduation in height. So when it came to my first attempt to actually slap chop miniatures, I decided to be a little bit cleverer than what most people are. And instead of going from dark gray to white, I went from dark purple to a cool off white. And this was based on some of the feedback on Byron's Slap Chop follow-up video where it said play with colour and I always like to play with colour and let's be fair, if I get this wrong, which I do, I can just paint it again, which I do. Now, one of the things I didn't follow from Byron's video is not to use a matte primer. And the only matte primer I had to hand was Colour Forge, and I actually primed these before I watched that video from Byron. But thanks to my airbrush, I was able to put the purple layer down, or dark grey in case of the corn dogs, and that managed to fill in some of the gaps that the matte layer had left me and just give me a much more smooth layer to start off with. The problem is if you start off with a heavily matte layer, then your dry brushing ends up being chalky before you've even really started. And I kind of had an idea of let's have an opposing force, two obvious opposing forces with this set. So that's why I went with the cool tones for the vampire elves and I went with the dark warm tones for the corn dogs. And I need to say here that I did follow a lot of that video. I spent a lot of time and instead of just rushing through the dry brush stage, I did do it very steadily and very gradually. And I took time on my earlier layers. And as you can probably see here that, yes, I've added some purple hue to the color, but actually the values, the darkness of the color is pretty standard and pretty comparable to what you would use if say you were going from a dark gray or black to a dawnstone or a light sea gray from Vallejo. The reason for the cool tones was purely to cool down the palette and have them in contrast to the corn dogs. Unfortunately though, where I got stuck is after I'd done this purple, I could not think of a color palette to use for these models. And I'd actually fallen in love with the box art at this time with the dark blacks or the, the, the cool black colors for the robes and then the really, really bright poppy orange colors. But I did want to cool down the flesh tones and make them a little bit more unnatural and vampiric. But I just tried to copy the box art colours using transparent contrast paints and unfortunately they just didn't pop. And on top of that, the other issue I had is because we've got a lot of robes here, I had the typical problems with contrast where they would start to pull up and leave tide marks in certain areas, which just wasn't up to the level of quality that I wanted for these miniatures. I'm not saying I made them better later, but it just wasn't right for the approach I was trying to take. And unfortunately, my purple experiment did more than just cool down the colours, it completely desaturated them, which, well, to be honest, if I'd had the time and thought about it, I kind of knew would happen. Maybe I could have gone up to a brighter highlight before applying these, but it completely washed out any of the paints I was trying to apply. The result was not good, I was not happy with it, I kind of fell into a bit of a huff and went to bed. 
Waking up the next morning, I decided to just follow my tried and tested approach. Although I've already skipped the airbrush stage, my usual approach is airbrush, dry brush, oil wash, done. Well, I couldn't really go back and airbrush these and I was in love with the dry brushing that I'd done because it had really, really popped out and it's some of the best dry brushing I've ever done on any models ever. But following the box art colours, I took out my Pro Acryl range, which I love for coverage. Most of these were just one coat paints. Maybe some of the some of them, like the oranges, were two coats, but the majority of them just one coat paints, and I just put down all of the primary colours, all of the foundation colours on all of the areas of the model. And I also took some time to, well, I took the opportunity to try out some of Pro Acryl's washers. And I've got to say, these are absolutely fantastic. I stopped using acrylic washers a long time ago. I much favor oil washers because you can get a lot more control afterwards. But honestly, these are great. They, they fall into the recesses where they need to. They don't stain anywhere near as much as other brands. And they kind of remind me of a better version of what the Army Painters paints used to be. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any footage because this is the point where I was getting in a rush. I was getting tired. I think it was two in the morning. So I haven't got any footage of me putting any of the oil wash on and wiping it off. But for anyone who's seen a Marco Frazzoni video, it's literally a case of putting a dark brown oil wash on there, leaving it 20 minutes to partially dry and then wiping it off with a Q-tip or cotton bud, depending on which part of the world you live in. Now, basing wise, this was super simple. I just got some of the Pine Forest base ready from Geek Gaming Scenics, and this literally was a case of putting down a splodge of their fast drying basing glue, which is so much better than PVA because it doesn't crack and dry and peel off after a couple of years. And you can actually smear it around with a brush, which is really great. Then all you need to do is dip the base in the pot, give it a little bit of a shake around, and you've got an arid wasteland. You know what? I really need to do a video on these. Like, they're really, really good, and more people need to buy them. Geek Gaming's absolutely fantastic. But I won't be defeated, so I decided once again to try my hand at Slap Chop. And this time, even though I'd primed these models in Rhinox Hide, I decided to go with your typical dark grey, light grey, white, and then go in with contrast paints. Now, there's two reasons I'm not going to show you the full process. One is because you've seen it everywhere already. You don't need to go through this again. If you watch Artis Opus videos, they'll show you good dry brushing. If you watch any video on Slap Chop, it'll show you just get a dark grey, a light grey and a white and then work up in stages from that. The other reason is because my Vallejo paints are about four years old. Some of them were completely clogged. It resulted in them exploding all over my desk and I got so upset. I won't say the word I wanted to say, that I forgot to turn my camera on and then my camera SD card failed because I picked the wrong slot to record to and got really, really frustrated. So unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me going through this dry brushing stage beyond dark gray or mid gray even. And I don't have any of the footage for the slap chop applying the contrast paint, but you know how to do it. And again, I'll list the contents and what paints are used down in the video below. I'll stick a photo up so you can see the results. So back to the trees, and I've never done foliage before. Again, I've followed most of this from Geek Gaming Scenics, but didn't have a lot of the products that they recommend you have, such as matte sealant, for me to actually affix this stuff to the trees. And you'd probably expect me to say, hey, massive shout out to Woodland Scenics for sending me these products for free for using them in this review, but they didn't send me them for free. I paid for them. But I do want to give them a shout out anyway, because I rang them up and said, look, I'm running out of time and I need this in two days because I've got an article I want to try and get in and all this and all that. And they got them to me in two days. Oh, and I also picked up some of these slabs from Dew Wheeler Scenics, which are really, really cool. Brushstroke uses them in his videos. And oddly, they smell like sweets. So you remember I said I've never done this before and didn't have any of the right products? Yeah, I just ended up coating the arms of the trees in this fast drying basing glue and then tried to stick foam flock to it. That doesn't work. So I use super glue in the end and even then it was still quite fragile. So I'm having to wobble these to my photo booth and I am literally doing this at 3 a.m. the night before the deadline to get into that Warhammer community article. Like I said, I've got oceans of plastic. I've never had a rush to actually finish a paint job. I'm normally distracted by the next product review or the next Games Workshop product to actually ever finish a project. So it was really nice to actually have this deadline in order to force me to get something completed. 
I suppose now I know how it feels to be a tournament gamer the night before a tournament when you're up till 4am trying to get things painted and ready just so you can actually have the fight the next day. So my hat is off to all of you guys who can achieve this because I was exhausted for three days afterwards. Actually, today is three days afterwards. Probably explains why I'm still exhausted and why this video is so crap. I'd normally say like, comment and subscribe because it's good, but it isn't. I will resort to begging, please, please like, comment and subscribe. I, I think the effort I put in here is worth it. Thank you. So the next stage was just to get the photographs done, which was a simple case of getting them into my photo booth, taking several photos. I've actually got a TikTok up, which is quite popular about how to photo stack. So if you wanna do focus stacking, where you take photos of your model at the front, the models in the middle, the models at the back, and then it gets everything in focus because you blend those layers together in Photoshop. And looking back at my email, it was 3.05 AM when I actually got everything edited up and sent over to Games Workshop with the hope and prayer that I could actually make this article. But it was the slap chop technique I really wanted to talk about here. And there's a few things I learned. I think the main one is slap chop and dry brushing general is absolutely fantastic when it comes to some of the larger and just generally rounder and simpler miniatures. Scenery, big models, they all look great because you've got a huge area that you can coat and add texture to and add variation and different types of color graduation across the surface of a model. So from monsters and giants to scenery and space marines, this looks great. But when you get down to your smaller miniatures, such as these vampire elves we have here, there's so many tiny intricate details that, well, just getting into them with the dry brush, even the smaller dry brushes can be a bit of a chore. Even with the dry brushing I was able to do, it was still hard to get in the lighter greys because at this point I started to clog up some of the intricate detail that makes those miniatures really, really stand out. But hey, this was a first attempt and I'm definitely gonna go back to it at some point. I do love the approach, I, I love the technique and I love that it allows people more access to painting their miniatures with a lot more excitement and interest in the surface than just spraying it red and calling it a blood angel. So if it works for you, then that's great. I mean, I'm no pro painter. I look at my models and when I do put effort in, I tend to think they're probably just above average, which I'm happy with. And that's the whole point of this hobby. If you're happy with it and you're happy with the results, then keep doing it. If you want to improve, ask for feedback. If you don't want to improve, just show off the things that you're proud of. No matter what you think they are, somebody out there will look at them and say, wow, that's amazing compared to mine. And somebody else will probably think the same to them and so on and so on. So keep painting guys. And if it resonates with you, just keep doing that. Personally, for me, I think my approach is a bit more, I like the approach of uh, the say Marco Frizzoni and Cult of Paint. And that's what I'm trying to go for. The airbrush, dry brush, oil wash done. I'm just nowhere near as good as those guys, but you know what? I'm happy with what I put out and that's what matters. And I hope you are too. Did I make the Warhammer community article? Well, I don't know. I hope so. It should come out in this next week, or if you're watching this in the future, then it should have come out the week after this was released. So let's see. Keep your fingers crossed for me, guys. And if you do spot it, then by all means, let me know because I have a job and a wife and kids and a girlfriend. I have no time. I want to say thanks to our patrons for watching this. I hope you find this interesting that, you know, I have challenges just as much as everyone. And I hope it encourages you to paint more minis. And no, that isn't a plug for another channel. Although I do recommend you watch theirs over mine. Thinking back over the quality of the audio and video from this video, then I'm kind of wondering if you would like, comment or subscribe. I'm not going to recommend you do that. I suppose the best thing I can hope for is please don't unsubscribe. We have better things coming, I promise. See you next time. Fohammer out.